So this video is a sum up of the full DaVinci Resolve tutorial I created. For a detailed explanation, see the full tutorial in the description box and at the end of this video. And in the comment section of this video, there are timestamps so that you can click and skip to specific parts of this tutorial. So let's dive right in. If you haven't already installed DaVinci Resolve on your device, then click on the link I will leave in the description. This will take you to the website blackmagicdesign.com slash products slash DaVinci Resolve, where you can download the latest version. Once you have downloaded DaVinci Resolve and you open it, the first thing that you will see is your project manager window with all your existing projects. You can then continue editing your existing projects by clicking on them and then open. And you can start a new project from here by clicking on new project or untitled project. Let's create a new project and we can call this DaVinci tutorial and click on create. So this is the DaVinci Resolve interface. So before we do any importing, it is a good idea to make sure our project is set up correctly. So click on settings down at the bottom. Here is where we can customize settings for our video. The key ones we can set are our timeline resolution. So for this project, I will select 1080p. So we're going to leave the other settings as they are for now and click on save. So typically with any project, we're going to work from left to right. So we're going to start with the media page first. So let's click on media where we can import our video clips to DaVinci Resolve. Then down here where it says no clips in media pool, right click with your mouse, import media, or you can also use control I with your keyboard shortcut keys. Select the video footage from your computer. If you hold down control or command, you can select multiple clips and then click open. Do we want to change our project frame rate to match our clips? Yes, we do. So that our clips will play exactly as we have filmed them and the way we intend for them to look. So I'll click on change. So now that we have the footage we want to edit here, we can start editing it. There are two different areas where we can cut or edit our footage. There is the cut page and the edit page. Now in this tutorial, we're going to be using the edit page to do all of our cutting and assembling. There are different ways that you can cut a clip in DaVinci Resolve. Selecting an input and output is one of the quicker ways to cut your clip if you have a talking scene in your video. So if I want to cut this particular clip of me talking, I need to double click on it. It will then show in the source monitor or preview window right here. So this is my playback head and I can move it to any part of this clip. So I can do that up here or I can do that in the preview window. If I want to delete the beginning of my clip where I'm just getting ready to speak, I can move the playback head just before I start talking about here. Then I will press I on my keyboard, which stands for input. And I want my output or the end of this scene to be right here where I introduce myself. So I will move my playback head to that part and press O on my keyboard, which stands for output. Now what I can do is to drag my clip onto my timeline by clicking in the preview window and just dragging the clip down to my timeline area. If I do that, it will add my clip and audio to my timeline. So let me undo what I've just done by pressing Ctrl Z on my keyboard. Now, if I only want the clip on my timeline without the audio, I can click on this button and drag it down to the timeline. If I only want the audio on my timeline, then I can click on this button and drag down only the audio track of this clip. It's that simple.
If you want to trim a section of your clip on the timeline, hover over the beginning or end of that clip with your mouse. When you are at the edge, you will notice your selection tool changes to the trim tool. You can then drag in your clip to your desired point, and you can do the same for the end part of your clip. And say, for example, you only want to trim the audio track of your video and not the video itself. You can click on the link tool to disable it. And then you can drag in or trim only the audio track or even the video track without modifying other parts. Another way to edit your clips is by using the blade tool, which is right here. To use this tool, your clips need to be on the timeline. So I'm going to add another clip on my timeline from the media pool, simply by dragging it down to my timeline. I want to delete this section here on my clip where my son starts coming towards me. So I'm going to press B on my keyboard, which changes the selection tool to the blade tool. When I hover over this clip with the blade tool, it will show up in the timeline window, as you can see. So I can cut the parts that I don't want simply by clicking on them without using the playback head or the cursor at all. And the next part I want to cut is where we start to board the boat. So I'm going to click here to cut. Now this is very important. Press A on your keyboard to bring back the selection tool. Now click on the clip that you want to delete, which is this one right here. And then you can either hit backspace on your keyboard, which will delete the clip, but leave a space or a gap here. Or you can hit delete on your keyboard. And you can see it will automatically move your clip to fill in the gap which was created by the deleted clip. So it's much quicker to press delete. By the way, anytime you need to close a gap on your timeline, select the gap by clicking on it and then hit delete to ripple delete that space. An even faster way to remove unwanted parts of your clip is to do a ripple edit or trim tub. This is when you use the shortcut keys Control shift square bracket left or right. In addition, while you're editing your clips, you can also move them around by clicking on them and then dragging them to other parts of your timeline. So once you have done your main edits, the next step can be to add some overlay footage over your main edit to really help your viewers stay engaged and get a clearer picture of what you're talking about. For example, if I want to add this clip over my main edit, I can either edit it in the preview window by selecting an input and output, as I've shown you previously, and then I can drag it onto video two, just above the main edit, or I can drag it directly from the media pool onto my timeline area and edit the overlay clip using the trim tool and blade tool, like I've shown you previously as well. Now you can see that our cursor is snapping or jumping to these edits in our timeline when we are editing our overlay clip. If you don't want that to happen, so you want more control, then turn off the snapping button and that will give you a greater amount of control. If you want to remove audio track from an overlay clip on your timeline, for example, this one, make sure that position lock is selected. This will make sure that only the audio track gets deleted and no other parts are deleted as well. Then hit delete on your keyboard to delete. So now that we have added our B-roll or overlay footage, the next step can be to add music or another audio track to our project. Here is my audio track in the media pool. We can create another audio layer by left clicking on the black space in audio 2 and select add track and then stereo. 
then drag your audio track onto the timeline in audio 3. We can edit our audio track the same way that we edit our clips. We can trim the start and end parts of our audio by dragging in the track. We can also adjust the volume by hovering over the white line on our wave track. Our selection tool will change to opposite arrows and then we can drag the volume down or up as we see fit. Also, if we want to fade in or out our audio track, we can move our cursor to this marker here and drag it in. Now that we have added music to our project, the next step is to add any titles or captions. I want to add a title at the beginning of my project, so I will slide my playback head towards the beginning of my first clip. Then click on Effects Library up here and click on Titles down here on the left side. So the titles at the top here are our basic text titles and our fusion titles are a little bit more advanced. If you hover over any title, it will give you a preview in the timeline window. So let's drag the basic title on top of our first clip. I'm going to double click on the text box and that is going to open our inspector palette at the top right here. This is where we can customize our text. So I will type multilingual family in here and you can see it will show up in our timeline window. I can change the font of my text here. I can make it bold or italic here. I can change the color here. I can increase the size and even the spacing between the letters and the line here. I can also move the position of my text by hovering in the center of the box and then dragging the opposite arrows either to the left or to the right. I can also adjust the position in my preview window by dragging the text to where I want it to go. The next step is to add transitions to our video to polish our video and make it look more fluent or smooth. We still have this panel opened on the side. If you can't see it, go up here to Effects Library and then click on Video Transitions. Also, if you hover over the transitions, you can see how they appear in the timeline window. If we want this title to fade in and out, we can add a cross dissolve to the beginning by dragging the transition and dropping it right here. And then we can drag another one at the end of the title. And if you hover over the edge of the transition box, you can change the duration of the transition by dragging it in so it's a quick fade, or we can drag it out to make it a long, slow fade. So now that we have made our project look more polished, the next step can be to color correct and color grade our footage. So for that, we can click on the color page down here. And this page has a lot of different color correction and color grading effects to really improve the overall look of your clips. The process of color correcting is really making sure that our footage looks exactly the way that the human eye sees things. Color grading is adding a bit more vibrancy or mood to our clips. If you think you need to improve the look of your clips, I've made a short and basic color correction and color grading tutorial, which will help to boost the look of your footage. I will link it down below and at the end of this video. So once we have done all our adjustments and corrections, the final step is to export your video. Yay! So click on the link deliver at the bottom here. So if you have very specific settings you want to use, then you can modify them here. We've also got presets at the top here for places like YouTube and Vimeo. And if you're planning to use either of those two, 
then this is an easy and fast way to export your project with the right settings in place. So I'm going to select YouTube for this example. Click on the arrow next to it and we can export it in 720p, 1080p, which is HD, or 2160p, 4K. So for this project, I have a 1080p project. We can choose Browse to select where we want this to go. I'm going to put it into my documents. And if you like, you have the option to upload your file directly onto YouTube. So once you are happy with your settings, click on Add to Render Queue. This will pop up on the side here, and you will need to click on Start Render, and that will start saving out your video. So this is how to use DaVinci Resolve for beginners step by step. I hope you have found this video useful. If you have, don't forget to give this video a like. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.